what we're here today to talk about is the new version of CASP Plus from CompTIA. CASP Plus, um, it is the CompTIA Advanced Security Practitioner Exam, and it focuses on skills for security engineers and for security architects uh, and uh, risk analysis um, in an enterprise environment. And it's very focused on GRC and that your tasks essentially in those areas are related to GRC and so you can comply to various regulations depending on uh, what you're under. Um, and so when we are going to revise these exams, we want to look at the industry and we want to see what is the industry looking like? What changes are impacting the skills of those two job roles that I mentioned, security engineer and security architect? So we do a lot of research. Um, many of you know CompTIA issued a 21 or a 2021 a state of cybersecurity report. I suggest uh, everyone read this um, because it talks about uh, some of the main architectures of zero trust and those components are found in CASP+. We looked at the growth, first of all. The IT industry is still expected to grow you know, 10% in the next five years, and that's enormous growth for a global industry. And so the growth is due to companies continuing to be aware of the amount of money uh, you can make uh, in IT. And so as long as businesses are using IT, we're going to have to have strong cybersecurity to protect those business systems. Um, with the areas of growth, we're looking at those zero trust architecture concepts. If you're not familiar with them, it's basic. Zero trust um, architecture, let's call it zero trust methodology. It's a way of thinking zero trust. And it's essentially, you don't trust anything on your network. I don't even trust the wireless connection from my laptop you know, to my wireless router. You have to assume nothing is secure. And this is a really great way to look at uh, cybersecurity because, among other things, you focus on end-to-end -end security. And so we looked at the need for this endpoint security and VPN security measures. Also, you know, there, you have the ability now to do uh, to run thin clients out of the cloud using all the main services. And so you find smaller MSPs now that are simply, you know, running thin clients um, uh, from Azure. And so it's uh, really made it simple. It's going back to the old mainframe. Remember, um, well, back in the 70s, this is even before my time uh, with mainframe computers, you had a mainframe and then you had these dumb terminals that basically just accessed the main brain. Think of it, we've gone back to that. It's just the main brain, that mainframe is in the cloud now and you're just controlling the thin clients from there. Excellent model. I talked to MSPs, they're doing it every moment because that gives you the endpoint security we're talking about. Um, and um, also, you know, this isn't necessarily related, but IT, I mean, for end users it is, um, because we have to continue to train our end users in cyber hygiene practices, because, you know, end users are where the majority of our, um, uh, our, our issues come from, from social engineering attacks. Um, as far as opportunities, uh, we really are looking at IoT-based software is getting more popular and more popular. And so these IoT systems are usually just embedded systems with like a custom Linux kernel on it. And so, you know, as these are out there in the field, we have to make sure that we're managing them through uh, management, um, you know, or from uh, mobile device management techniques um, and, and make sure they're secure, make sure we can push out updates to them. That's you know been a problem with IoT for many years and it's still a problem and that's why there's opportunities here for it. Um, and so what is the challenge? Uh, we have, we're still having far too many cybersecurity breaches, uh, 32,000 uh, just in the last year. Uh, that's 32,000 that have been reported. Um, and that of course means, you know, there are thousands of businesses that went out of business um, you know, within those 32,000, many of them large industries or large companies. Um, and so we continue to see the global industry sector uh, targeted, uh, manufacturing in particular, public works. Um, the reason is manufacturing public works, they use the pro pro programmable logic controllers. So, you know, you're, they're running those systems, right, that are moving things, you know, maybe opening up a, a gate or a dam. Uh, but the PLCs are just the, you know, way of having the computer do the physical action to that device. 
Uh, so you have to make sure these are secure. And they were installed in most of our uh, manufacturing plants in the U.S. and around the world. Um, they were SCADA systems, um, and they're, um, you know, the PLC systems that uh, essentially what they are. And, you know, we have to make sure we're securing those because those PLCs, this uh, this stuff, manufacturing, man, it's used for our public work system, our nuclear power plants. So one of the people that helped us with this actually helps with the uh, protect the United States public infrastructure, including nuclear power plants. So we have that expertise in here. Um and then we also find out, you know, where is the biggest area, the biggest shortage of cybersecurity skills? It's right here where CASP Plus exists. Um, the, all of the gaps are here at the senior level cybersecurity position. 